Do you feel lost or frustrated when you're hitting the heavy bag? Well, trust me, I know exactly how you feel. This is exactly why I made this video to help you level up your training when you're hitting the heavy bag. So this way you can hit the heavy bag like a professional fighter. What's up professional Muay Thai fighter, Sean Fagan here from MuayThaiGuy.com and today I'm gonna to break down how you can hit the heavy bag like a pro fighter so you can feel more comfortable and confident next time you step in front of the bag. Now, I'm gonna go over a bunch of tips and obviously you don't have to listen to all the tips all at once, but if you're able to implement one at a time and just keep improving in your heavy bag session, you'll notice a big difference later on. Now tip number one is the most important tip in my opinion, it's a set an intention. If you don't have an intention behind hitting the heavy bag, it can be really easy to just go through the motions, pick up bad habits, and not really get much out of your heavy bag session. So before you hit the heavy bag next, decide, are you going to work on your power, developing power in your hooks, or your kicks, are you going to work on speed, are you going to work on specific techniques, are you going to work on fakes and feints or defense. It can be the entire workout have like one specific theme or each round can have a specific theme. It's up to you. But regardless of what you do, especially as a beginner, you want to have an intention behind your workout when you're hitting the heavy bag. If you progress and you're more of an intermediate and advanced, flowing and freestyling is a little bit of a better option sometimes. But when it comes down to it, having some type of structure behind your workout is going to make a huge difference. Tip number two is you want to move. Okay, obviously the heavy bag is not going to hit your back, but when you're sparring or you decide to fight and step in the ring, you're obviously going to be attacked and countered every time you strike or almost every time you strike. So it's really good to build a muscle memory after you strike is to always move. Okay, so I'll break down some really basic footwork right now. So I'm going to just throw the jab cross, right? So I throw jab cross. Okay, what I want to do is after I throw my combination, it could be any combination I want to move. I can move to my lead side, which is my left side because I'm orthodox. When I do that, I'm just going to step and pivot, okay? So I'll do that one more time, jab cross, step and pivot. Now I can move back if I want to. I can throw a jab cross, back and step. So this way I can avoid any type of counters that my opponent's going to throw at me. Or I could throw jab cross, step and pivot to the opposite side, okay? So if you want to, a good intention, a good uh, sp specific theme for a round is to throw this combination and just move in each direction. So for example, I'll throw jab cross, move to my left. Jab cross, move back. Jab cross, move to my right. Okay? You can obviously mix up, if you're a Muay Thai fighter or do MMA, you can throw a combination and then move. Throw a combination and then move. Okay? But the idea is you want to be able to throw something and then have the muscle memory to move and evade so this way you can avoid any type of counters. Speaking of which, tip number three is you want to strike and then defend. So moving is one form of defense, but also checking kicks, parrying, catching, uh, leaning back or evading, that's another form of defense. So you want to build this into your muscle memory, into your defensive arsenal, so this way when you spar or you fight, you don't have to think about it, it's already there, okay? So I'll, I'm going to just throw the jab cross to keep it simple, right? So I throw a jab cross, boom, boom, then I can long guard if I want, okay? Or I could throw jab cross and then check. I could check a kick if they're coming with a return uh, right roundhouse, right? Or I could throw jab cross, I can catch that kick and then counter, all right? Or I could throw jab cross, I can lean back, okay? Whatever it is, I want to have some type of movement or defensive maneuver after all my strikes. So this way it is have that muscle memory so when it comes to sparring or fighting, it's automatic. Tip number four is a pretty basic one, but I see so many people do this wrong, is you want to punch at least eye level, if not higher. You're not going to fight a midget most of the time, okay? If you do, you're a horrible person. But what I want to focus on is make sure I'm punching eye level, okay? Because chances are you're going to be fighting someone around your height, okay? If you get into the habit of punching down, A, when you punch down, your chin and everything is wide open. So even if you're punching to the body, you need a corkscrew down, okay? Don't necessarily want to punch down because then it's a little bit easier to get counter, okay? So whenever I'm punching, chin tucked, eyes up, right? Hands up. I want to make sure <clears throat> I'm punching up nice and high. <clears throat> okay? This will also help with shoulder endurance as well. 
Speaking of punching high, the next tip is changing levels and diversifying your strikes. So obviously it's really easy to get caught head hunting, especially if you get someone wobbled, you just want to knock them out, right? But in this case, I want to make sure I'm attacking the leg, attacking the body, and attacking the head. So this way, I diversify my strikes enough so they don't know what's coming. So I'm going to throw a combination, jab, hook, low kick, cross to the head, and then maybe a left kick to the body. This way, I'm always just mixing things up so my opponent never knows what's coming, okay? All right, so try to change levels, diversify your strikes, and uh, yeah, mix things up so this way it's really hard for your opponent to defend. Tip number six is break your rhythm. So there's two main forms of striking. I learned this from Duke Rufus. Uh, if you don't know Duke Rufus, go check him out. He's an OG, he knows his, knows his stuff. I don't wanna curse but he knows this stuff, okay? So um, what I want to focus on here is cadence striking is when you're going left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, okay? Not, your body naturally is like a pulley system, so when you throw your right, the left side makes sense to follow up with. Now your opponent knows this though, and if you break up your rhythm and you double up on one side, it can break the rhythm and make it a little bit harder for your opponent to see what's coming, right? So the cadence striking is left, right, left, right. The broken rhythm striking is right, 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 or left, 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 okay? So make sure you're mixing in both of those types of strikes. Tip number seven is be creative, okay? Have fun. This is a great time to experiment and try different uh, types of strikes techniques and variations that you might not be comfortable uh, trying out in sparring or in a fight yet. So for example, spinning back elbows, spinning kicks, uh, flying kicks, flying knees, uh, switching stances, fighting in an opposite stance, which I'm a big proponent of and I would highly recommend, uh, using jumping teeps like the Sanchai, or using the scissor kick, right, like Sanchai, or even the cartwheel kick, aye, like Sanchai, whatever it is, be creative, have fun, that's the purpose of the heavy bag. Tip number eight is I want to visualize the opponent, okay? When you hear fighters say fighting is 90% mental and 10% physical, yet no one really takes the time to focus on, well I shouldn't say no one, a majority of fighters don't take the time to really participate in the mental training that comes with uh, the physical training. And so obviously when you're physically training and pushing yourself, that's building your mind. But you also need to be uh, visually adapting, especially when you hit a heavy bag and try to imagine your opponent throwing the cross at you and you're counting with an uppercut hook and roundhouse or maybe they're throwing a kick at you. You check the kick, you fake the kick, come with a cross and then a roundhouse, okay? But you want to pretend that this is actually your opponent, right? Throw some fakes, get them to react and then based off whatever reactions, you'll be able to throw uh, the corresponding strike, okay? So really do yourself a favor and visualize this bag is actually trying to hurt you. Tip number nine, I kind of mentioned this before, but focus on defense. Now like I was saying before, after you throw a strike in a combination, you want to move or defend. But you also sometimes want to start with a defense and then work on your counters, okay? So sometimes it's good if you lean back, shoom, and they throw a head kick, chances are they're going to be out of position. So it'd be good to counter, okay? So use your defense as an offense. Sometimes you can throw the jab because when you jab, they'll try to jab you back, right? So you jab, they jab back, you can parry and then come with some type of counter. Or you can kick and get ready for them to return the kick, you check, and then you counter again, okay? But adding defense into the whole flow of your striking is super important. It's really easy to just focus on offense when you're hitting the heavy bag because you're not getting hit back. So it's up to you to visualize your opponent throwing stuff back at you. So this way you can work on your defense as well. Tip number 10 is utilizing fakes and feints, okay? I like to break down the difference like this. Feints are like the step before a fake. A feint is just kind of like a quick little shoulder turn, hip turn, and foot turn, okay? A fake is I'm actually like getting a little bit closer and actually throwing the strike and then I'm following that up, okay? So think of your combination, not just as like a jab, cross, hook, right? But maybe a fake jab and then a jab, cross, hook, then a check, okay? So most of the time when you learn combinations, it's just the strikes in itself. It's not the setup, it's not the movement, it's not the defense that's all intertwined in 
uh, with the combination. So now what I want you to do is think of your combinations as all encompassing in the fight game, okay? So I want to throw the fake. Maybe I'll fake my right hand, come with a hook, follow with a kick, and then check, and then evade, okay? Now I want to fake, maybe I'll throw the teep a couple times, get my opponent thinking about the teep, then I'll fake the teep and come moving with the elbow and follow up with the knee. If you're a Muay Thai fighter, really utilize the teep and fake the teep as much as you can uh, to get them to react because that's going to open up a whole plethora of uh, opportunities to, atta to attack. Tip number 11 is not every strike needs to land and not every strike needs to be powerful, okay? If you've ever been in a fight or you've sparred, you know that not every strike is going to land. And most of the time when I fought, it's the third, fourth, or fifth strike in a combination that is landing. It's usually not the first one or two because they can see that coming. So that being said, when you're working the heavy bag, sometimes maybe feel them out, throw some light strikes, and then get them to react. Maybe the cover up up here, say I throw the one, two, and it shells up like this, then I'll, uh, 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 and then I'll attack the body, okay? Or I'll attack the leg. So I want to get my opponent to react and to cover up. And so in order to do that, I need to make sure that I forgot what, what tip I'm even talking about right now. Oh, not every power has to go in the strike, right? So use speed sometimes, use fake sometimes, and sometimes you can even practice missing and see what makes sense off of a miss. Like one thing I really like to do, well, I don't do this, but I would like to imagine I would do this in a fight, is I miss a roundhouse kick and I come into a spinning back elbow or spinning back fist of some sort. So think about what strikes can follow up off of misses and also what strikes can set up the more power KO strikes at the end of the combination. Tip number 12 is to move with the bag. So if you have a hanging bag, this is applicable. If you don't have a heavy bag that, uh, or a hanging bag, it's gonna be a little bit harder, but you should still make sure you're moving, okay? When this heavy bag is moving, I wanna make sure uh, 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 I'm moving with it. Uh, uh, okay, this way I get used to not staying stationary when I'm striking. It can be really easy to just be standing in front of the bag uh, 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 and throwing strikes in one position, okay? What I want you to do is make sure you're moving around uh, regardless if the bag's moving or if it's not moving. Some bags swing a lot more than others, but you need to use that to your advantage to focus on your footwork, focus on what combinations and angles work, and uh, just be more creative and open to whatever may come. The 13th and final tip is to use structure in your workouts, okay? Or have some type of progressive plan so this way you know what type of techniques and combinations you need to be working on in order to improve. Especially if you know what some of your weaknesses are. If you structure this into a workout program for the heavy bag, then it's gonna be so much easier to see improvement and see progress since you're focusing on those key aspects. Uh, this being said, I created a program, Heavy Bag Blueprint 2.0, because I needed something for myself to follow and I figured I'd just share it with you and everyone else. This way, in, one, in round one, maybe I'm just working on my roundhouses. Round two, maybe I'm working on setting up my roundhouses with some hand combinations. And then round three, maybe I'm working on counter or kicking and then defending, okay? This type of structure and intention, like I was saying for tip number one, will give you so much more valuable quality time on the heavy bag as opposed to just winging it and going all in. Yes, it does pay off to just kind of flow and let your creative side go, but also having some type of structure and routine to follow along with, and if you want to have some follow along workouts, you can check those out on my YouTube channel or the Heavy Bag Blueprint as well. It's just going to make things that much more fun, that much more purposeful, and you'll see results uh, in no time. So those are some of the tips I wanted to share with you. Let me know what you thought in the comments below. Make sure you check out the Heavy Bag Blueprint 2.0 at heavybagblueprint.com. Use the code YouTube for 20% off, and let me know if you have any questions. I also got a free workout for you in the description, so check that out too, and I'll see you in the next video.